Hey guys, uh, welcome to episode three of the PC build. In this episode, we're, we're going to be installing the CPU fan. Don't forget your wrist strap and be sure to discharge before uh, working on the motherboard. Okay, hi guys. So, uh, okay, so we're, in, we're going to be installing the, uh, the, com the CPU fan and heatsink combo. Now this is what, this is uh, very common of what you're going to get. Maybe not this shape and all that. Uh, this is actually a really nice one. This is made by Ultra. Um, maybe not this shape. Some of them are rectangular. This one's round. But basically, you're going to have a, you're going to have a heatsink and then you're going to have a fan. Okay, and that then hooks into the, the four pin uh, CPU connector. I would buy a CPU and heatsink fan combo, buy them together, then that then you know they're meant for that meant for each other. But we're not gonna use that one. Okay. Okay, we're gonna use this one. This is mine. This is much bigger <laughs> and much better. <laughs> this is what they call this is a um, made by the same company, Ultra. And what the reason it's got all this extra wiring, other than just for the fan, is that this actually has what they call a um, uh, a TE a TEC cell in it, or or um, or uh, it's actually the Peltier effect. Okay, and the module that's in this enshrouded in this thing, um, it's it. There's a little module in between here and here between these two plates, and what that does, it's a it's called the Peltier effect, and what it does is, it uh, you you apply power. I'm not sure of the materials. I believe they're two dissimilar metals, like I believe, or maybe there's some ceramic in there. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's probably two dissimilar metals, but anyways, the the effect is this: you apply power to it, and it actually on one side of the one side of the module will be extremely cold, okay? But the adverse effect is that the other side of, of the module will be extremely hot. So that's why the heat sink, that's why you such have such a massive heat sink here attached to a fan, and in which this will allow you to overclock a little bit. But I don't think, uh, but at this point, if you're new to this, don't be worrying about overclocking at this point. Get a build under your, under your belt first, then start delving into uh, overclocking. For for just regular, uh, uh, you know, if you're just running the CPU at what the, what it's recommended, I, you just need a regular fan uh, and and uh, heatsink combo. Like I said, buy it in a kit so that you know they go together. Okay, let me show you the backing, which is it'll be pretty common for any heatsink you buy. You're going to get a back plating, and uh, this back plating usually doesn't have neoprene and I the only reason this has neoprene uh, is because because of condensation that that could produce uh, because of the uh, two difference uh, two, the differences in temperature between the top and the bottom so I think that's why we have that's why there's neoprene here but and also it might be also because well because it needs protection too because remember we were talking about nylon uh, we're talking about this goes on the back where all the circuitry is and all the solder points, and you can uh, so you can imagine you know if you didn't have any protection you would just short out your system. So this is the same idea here. They have the neoprene for I think for the condensation, and also some plastic to keep you from uh, shorting anything out against this metal plating and the um, chassis. So, but these just go like this. Uh, it's not really complicated. Okay, and I'll show you where this goes. Okay, and the way it fits is this. Okay, it goes just like this. That's how it goes. We're back here at the CPU. At this point, we're gonna uh, go ahead and install the back plating first, and then we'll go ahead and install everything else. Now, you'll notice uh, if you end up getting bigger, uh, uh, you know, upgraded uh, CPU fan and um, heatsink combos, up, up better ones. Uh, you'll run into clearance issues with higher with like memory. That's why I had to use these modules over here as opposed to these over here. Is because um, it it doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. These are just too tall. 
it was, you know, these are designed for, uh, the motherboard is not designed, the clearances are not designed for these high rise on these, it's just not. Um, and you're gonna run into that combo, so you just gotta kinda watch out when you're purchasing. Let's go ahead and uh, let me just show you the mod, let me show you the holes here that are on the, remember lift it, always kinda lift it from the side. See the holes? Yeah, that's pretty clear. Okay, that's where that back plating uh, studs are gonna go through. Okay, so here we go. We're on the back side here. And be careful, remember that the, there, are, uh, there are transistors on the back of this, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna be too rough with this, uh, with the back side even. So here are, the, uh, here are the holes there, and we're gonna go ahead and put in the plating here. As simply as just putting it in. It's nothing. Okay, so here is um, this is a heat sink compound, and basically it's got it's got some it's got metals in it uh, that allow for great for good uh, heat transfer. Now you'll go online and see a lot of uh, different ways of doing it and the amounts that they put on are, are, are sometimes really excessive. Let me tell you what you're actually looking for when you use this stuff. And this stuff uh, will get all over your fingers, okay? It don't, if you don't, don't use a towel, okay? Because you might produce some static electricity on top of the, um, on top of the CPU here if you rub it around. Uh, just use your finger takes a little bit to get out, but it'll eventually get out. But anyways, let me show you, uh, this is called thermal compound. It, uh, the best stuff I found, uh, this works too, but I, I like the uh, Arctic Silver. And this is really worth the investment in getting, uh, I would get the Arctic Silver. It, uh, it the heat transfer is really good on it. Um, so, uh, and that's what you're trying to do. You're transfer, trying to transfer the CPU heat to the bottom of that uh, that block of uh, aluminum uh, at the bottom of that uh, uh, of my CPU cooler, okay. The reason for using this is other than the the transfer part too, because it transfers heat well. You would think, well, I've already got metal on metal. What else do I need? Well, the reason they use this, uh, the main reason, uh, is that even though this looks flat, this area looks flat right here. It's actually it's it's actually got a lot of uh, valleys in it, uh, scratch marks, uh, whatever, uh, just valleys that need to be filled in, and, and to get proper heat transfer, and that's what this is for. Uh, there will be people online that say you need to uh, you need to uh, you know take sandpaper and scuff it up. This is not um, we are not looking for adhesion here. Uh, we're not, it's not like painting a car, you know, we're not looking for adhesion, but that's not what we want here. We want to fill in. We don't want to create more valleys and um, valleys in the metal. We want to reduce them. So do not use sandpaper, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, if you do any research and it says to do that, don't do that. Uh, just, and um, so don't use sandpaper as the first thing. And the first step and the second tip is you don't need very much of this stuff you just need enough to smear it on that it's lightly coated and believe me do not just gob this on uh, don't put a lot of pressure because this stuff along it goes a long way see that it's not very much right okay watch how much this how far this spreads out I would say use enough like say how much I got on my finger I mean, that's going to take me days to get off, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, the uh, the fan, of course, goes in, uh, pulls air, in my case, the pulls the air from the outside and pulls it through the, the cooling fans and out. Um, now, you want to figure out which way to put it, because technically I could put it, I could put it anyway, because it's just a square. Uh, pattern here so I can put it this way you need to find out which direction this needs to go in the best way to do that is you kind of got to have to see how it's going to go in your chassis okay so here's my case and we I just have to or I had to figure out the best position uh, which direction to put that in now uh, you'll notice that uh, okay 
it's on its it's on its uh, side right now. Here's the uh, front part where the fan goes. Okay, air comes through the bottom, goes, and then here's goes out the the back here. Okay, and then the power supply is up here. So that'll give you some. And these were all the bays are. Okay, so you get some idea of what I'm looking at here. Okay, uh, now uh, higher end uh, cases will have a tray that pops out, okay, which makes it a lot easier to mount the uh, mount the uh, the motherboard, okay. And we'll get to this mounting part. So, um, if you look at the uh, the the back plate there, um, if you look at the uh, the opening here, that's where the uh, all your peripherals go. So you so you just want to orient your motherboard with that. So it's gonna the motherboard's gonna sit like this on top of the uh, tray. Okay. So let's just take a look and see what's gonna what's what's actually gonna hit. difficult sometimes the tray thing a little tight tolerances here oh no you didn't see that okay so at this point we figured out that we can't put the fan like this because the power supply fan has a fan at the bottom and as you can tell you know where the power supply is going it's going right here so it, they'll be fighting for air and that's no good now we can't put it this way uh, because you'll see that this is an exhaust fan. So this will be shoving air out. This will be shoving air outward and then this will be trying to suck in that hot air. So you'll be getting hot air across the fins. Okay, so we don't want we don't want we don't want hot air coming in and coming out. Uh, it's a whole defeats the whole purpose. We can't put it this way, or we can't put it, uh, well, let's see, we can't do this way, which we kind of, because we'll probably have some, get in the way of some cards, uh, the cards here, and then also, uh, also the fact that it'll be, it hits this, so that's the other, it's an obstruction. So the only way we can put it is like this. Um, that's why I had originally like that, um, but the slots, uh, like those two slots right here, the two slots here will be uh, will not be able to be used unless you use a smaller module. So that's how we're going to put this in. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and take the tray out and the motherboard out, and uh, we'll get this installed. Uh, one of the benefits also of uh, of being in that direction, it will actually br uh, bring cool air through the uh, through here when it's tr pulling in and, and pulling it out that way. So these will be cooled at the same time. So that that'll be a nice benefit. So let's go ahead and install this. Basically, uh, really not too much to it at this point. Just put the uh, uh, match up the holes to the studs and put it on okay all right now it's going to be wobbly at this point do not move it because it's not very it's not going to be stable okay so okay, see you can see this particular stud there uh, these are spring uh, spring uh, nuts it's probably good I think they're a tight they're a nut uh, it's a type of nut, but it's got a spring on it to press everything down, press the, uh, the thermal, uh, the metal block down onto the CPU and get a good uh, heat transfer. So here we go. And basically all we're doing, we don't want to, uh, at this point, you got to put a little pressure down because you got to, you just got to get this thing started. Okay, a little, little, when I said little, now don't clamp it down, okay? Uh, like like anything that's being clamped down when we did when we worked on the forward right we, we do it in a pattern so let's go ahead and just get these things started push it down a little bit on this side get it start get the screw started in the threads 
We'll, we'll do this one and we'll do them on diagonals first. Try to do them at the same time. So kind of synchronize your fingers. Okay, when that gets tight a little bit, let's switch over. We're going to switch over to the other ones here, this one. Okay. Try to synchronize your, your turns. Okay, that feels, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. You got to judge it a little bit on your own. Um, but those feel pretty tight. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, at this point, we've got the, uh, the modules in. And we've got the we got the memory modules in the dim modules, right? These are dim modules. These are the dims, okay? The dim slots, and then we've got our fan installed, okay? If you got any questions, uh, give me a holler, and I'll answer them before the next week's uh, episode comes out. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode. Um, I'll have I'll see you next Wednesday with the the next uh, the next episode. If you got any questions, go ahead and uh, put them in the comments, and I'll answer them. Uh, they don't have to be related to. Uh, uh, they don't have to be related to this particular video. If you just have a computer question, and you want it answered, let me know. Um, okay, and I, I appreciate you guys' loyalty, uh, and you know, sticking with me. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, I want to reward you a little bit for that because I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. If you have any co comments on the video, be sure to put them down and I will get to them. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. See ya.